Yeah, well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming here to Cascades this evening. Um, Lower Thames Crossing Association hosting this meeting for you. We're not Highways England. We didn't bring this road to you. We're here help, trying to help you uh, respond and fight and get the best possible mitigation we can for what Highways England have brought to us. Um, up here with me this evening, talking to you will be, we've got Robin Ball, uh, Chair of the Lower Thames Crossing Association. And we've got Bob Lane, Spokesperson for Lower Thames Crossing Association. And um, I'm inviting Robin to chair this meeting for us this evening. Um, there will be a chance at the end to go through any questions you might have and we'll do our best to help answer those for you. Thank you. Oh, one last thing. If anybody has any issues with any photos or video of themselves being taken this evening, please come and let us know afterwards and we'll make sure that those are edited out for you. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Can you all hear me in the back? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I thought I'd just say a few words uh, about uh, the Lower Thames Crossing and uh, the recent um, history. Uh, some of you might not be aware of um, who we are. Thanks, Bob. So, um, just to be clear on uh, who the um, LTCA are, um, it's a charitable, charitable organisation established to benefit the communi communities impacted by the proposed Lower Thames Crossing. Uh, we've got three main objectives uh, to oppose the proposals and to, uh, to the detriment and environment of communities of North Kent, to promote solutions which maximise relief from traffic congestion and pollution and to promote measures to mitigate the, uh, the adverse impacts of the final crossing option. Uh, we set up the LTCA to coordinate the activities of um, various parties representing um, areas such as Chalk, Riverview Park, Shaun, Hyam and Cobham, and to get a common message across the Highways England and the government about local views. <clears throat> One final point on that uh, is important to mention. Uh, we do completely oppose um, the crossing proposals. Uh, we don't believe it's the right solution. But Highways England will, of course, push ahead with their uh, plans anyway. So we must fight to get as good an outcome as we possibly can. As uh, many of you will know, the, um, the history of the government's plans for another crossing um, of the Thames East of Dartford uh, date back to uh, 2009 and uh, earlier. The LTCA only formed in early 2016, however, when news broke of the upcoming consultation in, the, in that spring. I personally heard a rumour about the um, new route uh, from family in Chalk over Christmas, that uh, 2015 Christmas. Uh, I was surprised that I hadn't heard anything about it on um, social media. Uh, as, as, as I'm sure you know, there's lots of Facebook groups talking about local issues. Uh, so my reaction was to set up a new group on Facebook called the Third Thames Crossing Kent's Views. And membership of that group grew really, really quickly. And uh, before I knew it, I had Councillor Brian Sweetland on the phone encouraging me to take matters further and reinvigorate the earlier campaigns from the 2013 um, consultation. Um, those campaigns were led at the time by A Bridge Too Far. That campaign organisation I wasn't even aware of um, in 2016, uh, so that was news to me. Credit goes to A Bridge Too Far um, and its founders uh, set that up back in 2013. Um, much of their efforts then um, contributed to what the LTCA went on to try to achieve. So, over the period from 2016 to today, as you can see there on the slides, um, that's a little potted history of um, the various events, um, various meetings mostly held in the Rose and Crown at Shaw. And uh, this slide here puts our events as a campaign group in context with um, Highways England's timeline, uh, which can be found in their consultation documents. Um, Forgive me, my notes are a little bit repetitive here, so I'm just reading them to skip over the bits that uh, I've already covered. Um, uh, 
Yeah, so just to reiterate, um, the aim is to get a common message across to Highways England and Government, and that message being no to option C. Uh, the founding members of the LTCA um, included Adam Holloway MP, Brian Sweetland, the late John Cubitt, who was the leader of Growth and Council at the time, Labour leader John Burden, as well as representatives from all the local parishes and action groups uh, who had uh, campaigned prior, prior to the LTC being set up. Uh, and by coincidence, the inaugural meeting of the LTCA, or of the, um, the action group, it hadn't even been named at that point, uh, took place uh, on the very day the consultation, news of the consultation broke. Uh, we were meeting in the Gravesend Civic, Civic Centre. <coughs> so I think that's almost it for me, except to say that uh, we're now in the <coughs> formal consultation, um, being run by Highways England up to the 20th of December. Uh, and uh, we're required to un they, they're required to undertake that consultation um, as part of the uh, development consent order process because this is being handled as a nationally significant infrastructure project. So that's a big uh, planning uh, process that they've got to go through. So um, it's really important that we respond uh, to this consultation. It's all part of the planning process for them to get their uh, proposals delivered. Okay, I'll um, hand over to Aaron. He's going to take you through some details of the crossing. Thank you. Excuse me, just a moment. Right, what I'm going to do is take you through some, uh, some graphics to show you and help describe the impact as I see it to Riverview um, residents in this area and the immediate vicinity. Hopefully some of you recognise this. So here we've got the A2. As the proposals suggest, the M2 would be extended up through the middle here. It's the middle section of this road. The A2 effectively is on the outside as an outer road with what we think is concrete barriers in between. Strewed over this way, Sean up here, Cobham over here. As current proposals are put forward, everyone from east of Gravesend, assuming they don't go down towards uh, the A227, anyone from east of Gravesend would be having to come through all the convoluted roundabouts and joining the traffic off of this T-junction here um, over near Shawn. So this is the junction where the LCC joins the Lower Thames Crossing joins. This area here you'll see is, is roughly speaking where the current service station is at Cobham. Coming off of the M2 here, this is where you would come off of the M2 to get to East Gravesend. Coming off from the A2 would be back roughly where the current exit is from the A2 where you would come to half Pencil Lane. Coming off from the Lower Thames Crossing itself, you'd have all the traffic coming this way and joining at the very same roundabout as all of the traffic coming from Medway direction, London bound. And you've got all this traffic while it's going this way, is also going to be meeting and navigating the roundabouts with the traffic trying to go that way. What this shows us here is force cutting and that is that uh, Highways England intend to build up embankments around the road. And what you'll see here, of course, this here is the topography. So the road comes down and the whole junction naturally sits in a, uh, a, 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 a divot, if you like, a lower, it's all lower ground here. And just to take a bit further along, so this is East Gravesend, Nell's Calf, roughly here, Valley Drive. If you're coming from East Gravesend, you've got one, two, three, four, another roundabout here, 
and the T-junction. There's about six or seven roundabouts and then the T-junction to navigate to be able to head on the A2. And that's like a tube map, if you will. This, this, this shows you, so as we were saying, coming from East Crow's End, Valley Drive, one, two, three, four, five, six roundabouts, and then joining a Brewers Road here. With all the traffic from Sean, Cobham, fighting you to go the other way, around the roundabouts. The, if you want to get to the, uh, the Wainscott Bypass, the actual exit from the A2, well it's not an exit from the A2, you're, you're still on the A2, but effectively you come off of the main carriageway which becomes the M2, and it actually comes off roughly where the LCC junction is here, to be able to take the Wainscott Bypass. What we will do is all the... Um, the slides that we're sharing this evening will make them available to you online as well. If you can see this, this is the junction, the lower end crossing facing the other way. So the river, the river is over that way. The, uh, the link road's coming down. Fong Lane is running here. So it gives you a sense, over, over here, Astra Drive, uh, the top end of Fong Lane, all of that traffic coming from East Graves End, wanting to come off, in theory, might, might decide to come down Fong Lane, the country, country road here. Good luck. So this, this isn't a single road. If you look at that, this is a whole network of roads all merging together right where our estate is here. This is the corner of Riverview Park right here. And the distance from the closest house to the road is approximately 50 meters. And it's not a single road, it's a whole network all merging right here. The, the levels, the road level and the, and the current ground level or the proposed ground level, it's roughly 11 meters from the, the ground level to where the, the road will be at this point. And it gradually, as you can see here, has to sweep downwards towards the tunnel. What this one shows you is same same area again. The green dots here, <coughs> environmental mitigation but what they're proposing is to put a woodland here so all of the where they were knocking down some of clay lane woods and where you saw the a2 and the m2 as a combined road split by um by a concrete um, concrete concrete wall <coughs> in between those at the moment if you think when you're going eastbound or westbound uh, london or, or coastbound in between the roads you've got the all, all the trees and all the all the wildlife that will all disappear, so part of their thinking is all of this here will replace it. Which, if we can get them to do that, it's, it's not a bad idea. You're joking. In addition here, <laughs> the purple dots, that represents environmental mitigation, which at the moment, it's anyone's guess what they intend to do there, but it would be nice if again we could perhaps get them to extend the woodland, the planting of trees around here. What they did say, we had a meeting with Highways England just last week, and they did say from the moment they, they are able to start get onto the land and start um, construction, uh, so from 2021 in theory, they will start planting trees then. It gives them the chance to mature by the time the road is, is ready. What we see here, they're going to have to divert the utilities. So we've got gas pipes and we've got the, the electric pylons are going to be, have to be diverted and they're brought closer to our estate. The distance here again is, is, is not much further than around about 50 metres to the nearest house. Public rights of way, they're proposing to put a footbridge here. 
which is probably a roughly level with the, the bottom end of where Cascades is. And um, where they've had to cut public rights away, they've had to divert them because they're, they're protected by law. And just to complete the picture, right there we have chalk. The tunnel portals are just south of the A226 Gravesend Road. <coughs> and when I've looked at the drawings, I think we were talking about that was roughly 20 metres from ground level to where the road level is at this point. I'm not sure on that yet. We'll, we'll try and answer that again for maybe. Coming back up just to show you the, the land use again. So this here was Clay Lane Ancient Woodland, which they're cutting through to be able to get the junctions in. When they had the uh, proposals in 2016, this was a much tighter junction. So all of the land use they had here, it wasn't like this. It was a much tighter junction. But the problem at the time they said was that they couldn't get the 70 mile per hour in having a tight junction. So that's why it's blown up to this, to this mess now that you see. So that just shows you the, the more complete picture for our side of the river. Of course, what you can't see here is the impact that you would have on the A227 going past Mepham, because the traffic's got to get here somehow. You've got the A2 where it comes from the M25, which at the moment is a single file roundabout to get from the M25 to the A2, supposing they want to use this as their um, network resilience, they call it. Of course, you've got Caxton Road as well, single farm most of the way, or Bluebell Hill. One of the things they are proposing to do is um, to make Fong Lane a green bridge, where it goes under Fong Lane, right next to Riverview Park, a green bridge. That's what I think of when I think of a green bridge. Perhaps you think of something like this. Well, their proposals, more of a hedge with a a rope with a hedge alongside. <laughs> so our thinking is perhaps we might like to ask them to make that a bit wider. And if you live a bit further away, so you're not right near the pylons, you're not right near the roads, you're up here somewhere, it's no problem. That's the noise impact across our estate and that's they've only measured up to 600 metres from the road. And what that means is the red is greater than one decibel. It could be 1.5 decibels. It could be 20 decibels. It's over one decibel. And that's more of a complete route for you. Here we have, this was the artist's drawing showing the proposed woodland. Um, Bob Lane will take you through in a moment his thoughts on the consultation. I think this will be in there perhaps. If, if you think it's a great idea to put a woodland there, tell them. And I'd like to pass you to Bob Lane now, take you through the consultation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm not quite as slick as these guys. Especially when I haven't got any little doobery. Thank you. Okay, so uh, there we go. That's a, a close up picture of the junction, it does look wonderful. Um, there's some deer that live in here and some sheep that graze around there, but they don't show on the picture. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is um, give you a guide to completing the questionnaire, but please, these are purely to help you make sense of the questionnaire. Uh, I'm gonna try and explain uh, what each question refers to and to highlight some of the aspects that you might want to think about when you're answering the questions. Let me emphasize that this is not an organized campaign response. This guide does not provide any responses or answers. That's got to be down to you. You can support or you can oppose the Lower Thames Crossing. It's your decision. Or you can comment on parts of it. This guide that I'm going to go through doesn't cover all of the questions and it really only refers to issues on this side of the river. 
you don't have to answer all the questions. If you've got something you want to say, then by all means say it. But if you've got nothing to say, say nothing. That would be my view. But there, if there is anything about this proposal that you want to see changed, you want to challenge, you want to see improved, this is your chance to tell them. Don't waste it. The one thing you mustn't do is ignore it because we're going to get this crossing. Whichever way you look at it, it's coming. So, I'm going to try and take this in the uh, way that it is um, presented to us. And I've already done that bit, so I'm not going to do it again. The first question that they ask you, this is on the need for the Lower Thames Crossing, and they spend a lot of detail telling you all about the case that Highways England have made to locate the Lower Thames Crossing east of Gravesend. And the question is whether you agree with their case and that it is needed and that it needs to be here. The stated case for the crossing is to boost the economy, to ease congestion at Dartford, to provide quicker journeys, to support local growth and to create a better future. Although who that better future for, I'm not quite sure. Now, lots of people might agree that something needs to be done. Uh, we know that the Dartford crossing is not fit for purpose. It's subject to repeated frequent incidents and delays and disruption. So you might agree that a new crossing is needed. But you might agree that you need a new crossing, but you don't want it here. But just make no mistake, they're not asking you whether you agree that there's a case for a new crossing somewhere on the river. They're asking you if you agree with their case to put the Lower Thames Crossing east of Gravesend. So when you start thinking about that question, I'm just trying to think of some things that you might want to ask yourself. Uh, and one of the things you, you might ask yourself, do you think we would need another crossing if they sorted out the problems at Dartford? Um, is locating the Lower Thames crossing east of Gravesend, is that the best solution to relieve traffic and congestion at Dartford and the M25? Um, would a new Lower Thames crossing just generate additional traffic and, and create more problems? All the sort of questions you need to think about. Do you want to promote growth and development in your local area? Is it acceptable for Highways England to seek to reduce the noise and pollution at Dartford by spreading it to other people down here? Would it be better to make more use of rail or shipping instead of building a new rail crossing? There's just lots of things to think about. I can't tell you what to say. I'm just saying these are the things you might want to think about. And the first question, 1A, is do you agree or disagree that the Lower Thames crossing is needed? And by that they mean needed here. So. Once you've answered that question, they're going to give you a box. And that box is so that you can tell them the reasons why you've given the answer that you gave. Now, of course, you might just simply agree that, yes, we need a new Lower Thames Crossing and we need it here. But that's fine. You can agree that. You might agree that we need a new Lower Thames Crossing, but you don't want it here. Just bear in mind, if you agree, they will present that as the majority of respondents agreed with that case for the Lower Thames Crossing east of Gravesend. So if you don't think it should be east of Gravesend, you should disagree and then go on to state your reasons. You'll have more opportunity to comment on the location in question two. Others might just disagree that there's a crossing needed at all. Or you might decide that you don't know, or you're undecided. It's up to you. You can do what you like, but 
please, it's your decision, but give your reasons. So the next question is, do you support or oppose the location of the preferred route for the Lower Thames crossing? What they're talking about now is the whole of the route from the M25 in Junction 20, north of Junction 29, all the way down to the M2 in Kent. So the question is, do you agree with that whole route? Do you think that option C, east of Gravesend, was the right decision? Some of you might remember that in uh, um, the last consultation we were only ever offered a choice of routes east of Gravesend. The majority of people still rejected their preferred routes. We expected to see Dartford, but it wasn't there. Many people thought option A14 might have been worth it. That's a, a tunnel linking the M25 south of Junction 2 through to the M25 north of Junction 30. But they dismissed that. So the question is, do you support their selection of the route east of Gravesend? If you do, tick the box. If you don't, then tick the box to disagree. They then give you another box and this is for you to tell them why. They asked, do you support or oppose the changes they have made to the route since the preferred route was announced in 2017? Well, to be honest, most of the changes have been north of the river. It's much longer over there. South of the river, the overall changes have been uh, um, mainly to extend the tunnel, <coughs> excuse me, uh, to widen the A2, M2 to 12 lanes, and a third version of the A2 junction. These details are in question three. Even if you don't agree with the location of the tunnel or the crossing, you might support some of the changes that they've made over the last year, or you may not. Use the consultation to comment on the changes they've made and to request further changes or improvements that you would like to see. Question 2C, they want to know, give you a box, want to know why you gave the answers that you gave. If you don't agree with how they arrived at their decision to put the crossing east of Gravesend, then tell them. If you think it's in the wrong place, tell them. If you still think that Dartford or option A14 is best, then tell them. But don't forget, if there are changes that you want to see to this crossing, please tell them. And for those of you who are completely happy with the route east of Gravesend and the changes they've made, by all means, tell them. That was the whole route. Now they're going to break it into sections and they start with the, the section south of the river. And they have made some changes. They've extended the tunnel by 600 metres. It's now south of the Gravesend Road, whereas it was near Lower Hyam Road. They've widened the approach road. It's now two lanes in each direction. It was two lanes, it's now three lanes, but without a, um, a hard shoulder. They've widened the A2 to 12 lanes, all the way down to the M2. They've redesigned the A2 junction for the third time to improve access to and from the A2 M2. Now please note, access to the A2 eastbound from Gravesend East is actually covered in question four. So these changes, you've got to give them an answer. Do you support the changes? Let's summarise that. Do you support this part of the route from Chalk through Southern Valley Golf Course under Thong Lane and out onto the A2. And are you happy with their plan to widen the A2 to 12 lanes? That is the question. Do you agree, you're neutral, or you disagree?
then I give you a box. And this box is to explain your reasons. So, the tunnel's been extended by 600 metres. There's no doubt that's an improvement to what it was. Think about it, is it enough? Would you like to see it extended a bit more? Um, the golf course is going to have to go. How do you feel about that? As Aaron said, they plan a green bridge where Thong Lane crosses over the main link road. It's basically a flyover with a grass verge either side. Is that a proper green bridge? Or should they make it wider with some green cut and cover either side? We mentioned the A2 M2 is going to be widened all the way down to uh, the M2. This will mean that the loss of the central green reservation and encroachment on the countryside either side. How do you feel about that? <coughs> They're going to have to demolish the Brewers Road Bridge and uh, Thong Lane Bridge as well to accommodate the widened A2M2. If you've got any improvements or changes you want to make to the design, please let them know. But if you're entirely happy with what they proposed south of the river, by all means, let them know. Presumably, they intend to rebuild Brewers Lane Bridge under the Yes, uh, Brewers Road again is going to be what they call a green bridge. It's going to have a grass verge either side of it. The next section of their route they look at is the tunnel. Not much you can say about the tunnel. It's going to be three lanes wide in each direction uh, without hard shoulder. There are no ventilation towers. It's going to be through ventilation from one end to the other and then from the other end back again. I guess you can think, is it in the right place? They've moved it very slightly. They did look at extending it um, 600 metres, and then 800 metres and 1,200 metres. In the end, they settled on 600 metres. It's an improvement, but is it enough? Think about whether you you would like to see them extend it further. And if you do, and that's what you want, then tell them. There is a service access road onto the A226. They've done away with the junction. Some people may be concerned about that. If you are concerned, or you want to know more details, then tell them. But if you're happy with the tunnel, you can just let them know. The next se section is north of the river, through Thurrock, Essex and Havering. They ask what you think of that section. Well, look, this guide is designed for people on this side of the river, so some of you may not have a strong view on the road nor route north of the river. Others may know it, and they may have their own opinions. But whichever way you look at it, the route in Essex mood leads here. So if you agree with the route in Essex, you agree with the route east of Gravesend? Bob, sorry. Yes. Can I just point out, obviously we're from north of the river, so if anyone yep. here wants any insight into that, we're quite happy to talk to you and share our Great. Thank that. you very much. If you support it, you're supporting a route that leads east of Gravesend. You've got a choice. So the question is, please give us your comments or any other views you have on the proposed route north of the river, including the bridges and banks, viaducts, and there are some viaducts over there. If you've got any comments on the north of the river, put them in the box. But if you don't know or you don't have any comments, you don't have to answer the question. And my opinion is if you don't have a view, then don't write anything. <coughs> Right, now they're on the connections and they're at the south of the river. And the big connection here is going to be the connections to the A2 and its impact on the existing road network. As Aaron said, Gravesend East will lose its direct access onto the A2 M2 eastbound. And access to the A2 eastbound will be via six roundabouts to Brewers Road in Shaw. You know, I wrote six or seven so many times over the last two months, and I counted them yesterday, and it's six. Or five, if you come from Heathcote Road. 
and Sean will lose its direct access to the A2 westbound at Halfpence Lane, so they're going to have to be coming in the opposite direction from Sean through uh, the roundabouts to Gravesend East. This two-way link road between Gravesend East and Halfpence Lane will also carry the traffic exiting from the M2 and traffic that's in exiting from the Lower Thames Crossing if they want to get to Gravesend East. And it's also interesting that traffic that comes up the A2 from Strood or from the A289 Wainscott Bypass, if they want to get to Gravesend East, they've got to use this road as well. So, although it's only two lanes, one in each direction, it's likely to be quite a busy road and it's going to be adding to congestion at Gravesend East, Harpens Lane and Brewers Road. So they ask whether you support or oppose the proposed junction between the Lower Thames Crossing and the M2A2. Once they ask you that question, they then give you a box and ask you why you gave them the answer that you gave them. If you're not happy with that access to the A2 East Barrow and Grayson East, the Brewers Road, then ask them to look again redesign it for them just say you're not happy needs to be simpler needs to we need access if that's what you want if you're not happy that access for for the a2 westbound from sean comes along that uh, road then again ask them to look again this two-way link road as i say it's linking brewers road thong lane new exits from the motorway and from the low thames crossing and graze in east. If you're not happy with it, tell them. <coughs> and there's a big concern here that this might create a rat run through Thong because you can avoid four of those roundabouts just by driving up and down Thong Lane. So it's a possibility that it could create a rat run through Thong. If you've got a concern about that or the extra traffic that it's going to create in places like Sean, Cobham, places like that, then tell them. They need to know if you've got concerns. But if you're entirely satisfied with their proposals and the impact it's going to have on the local roads, then please let them know. Connections north of the crossing, at least this means the ones at Tilbury on the A13 and the junction with the M25. There's four questions on this, 4C, 4D, 4E and 4F all about connections north of the river and since this guide is for people south of the river they're not in the scope of this guide however any of you who use that road and you've got views on the link road and its connections with the road network north of the river this is where you should tell them you might want to consider what the impact is going to be on their local roads. If it's going to impact ours, you can bet your life it's going to impact theirs, the A13 and all that sort of thing. But if you've got nothing to say, then say nothing. There's nothing to stop you just not answering a question if you're not sure. I confess, I don't walk very far, I don't ride a bike and I haven't got horse, so I don't know a great deal about this. But there will inevitably be some disruption to the public rights of way, particularly during the construction time. Footpath NG7 is the one that goes from the bottom of Thong Lane across the Seven Fields towards Shaw. And there's another one, NG8, that goes from up near the entrance to the golf course back across the fields down towards Chalk Church. Both of those will need to be diverted across a footbridge over the tunnel approach road. And this is a, going to be a, a narrow footbridge, very high above the road. Some people are concerned it might be a suicide bridge, but that's what's going to happen. At least they're going to reconnect it. Other footpaths, <coughs> 167 and 174, that runs between Thong and Clay Lane Woods. And NS167 and 169 runs between Thong and Michael Gardens. These have got to get across four lots of slip roads from the motorway. 
and they're going to be diverted through an underpass and then over two bridges to get past these slip roads. This will no longer be a pleasant walk for the people with their dogs. You know there's a footpath or a cycle track that runs alongside the A2 past the old petrol station site. That again has got to be diverted and it's going to be diverted through the same underpass over the two bridges, almost out to Thong and then back in. So if you are users of these footpaths, I would advise you strongly to familiarise yourself with the proposals before you answer that question yourself. <coughs> environmental impacts, there is volumes on the environmental side. Most of it telling them the sort of things they're going to be considering, not what they're going to be doing, but what they're going to be considering. All I would say is I do admit, as Aaron's showing you, that there's going to be adverse impacts in terms of noise, in terms of air quality and the environment in this area. And they will seek to minimise the adverse impacts and to <coughs> mitigate the damage to the environment, planting out, putting up barriers, sort of thing. And the good thing is that on balance, they believe that the adverse impacts on the people at east of Gravesend will be more than offset by the benefits to the people at Dartford. So the question is, do you agree or disagree with the proposed measures to reduce the impacts of the project? Again, they give you a box and they ask you um, for your response, why you gave that response, and anything else you can think of. I'm trying to think of things that you might want to think of. If, have you got concerns? What are your concerns about? Is it the noise, the emissions, the air quality, or any other potential pollution aspects? Do you have any suggestions how they can improve or reduce them? Because if you have, you ought to tell them. As Aaron said, the, the map showed that the land behind Astra Drive will be planted out with trees as environmental mitigation and to reduce noise impacts and a lot of people think that's a good idea. What guarantees have we got that this will be permanent? Yes sir. I went to a council meeting in June. All that area, this area, the golf course all the way down to Chalk is housing right up to the new motorway. You're speaking to the converted. There will be no trees. <laughs> the trees will go up how long for? That's the question. Um, so that's why I say, do we have any guarantees that this will be permanent? Do you consider that the Green Bridge, they proposed at Thong Lane, is that adequate for wildlife and to prevent severance between natural habitats and to mitigate against noise? Question for you. How does Highways England propose to mitigate against the impact of a 12 lane highway that goes through ancient woodland and a Kent area of north, uh, natural beauty, of outstanding natural beauty? Question for you, um, are you happy with the state of the A2 in terms of litter collection and all the slip roads? Because it's gonna be the same people looking after it. How are they gonna look after it when the roads will not have a hard shoulder. Are there any other assurances or guarantees or mitigation manager, uh, <coughs> mitigation measures you think that are needed? Because if you can think of them, you need to tell them. The development boundary, south of the river, Highways England plan to demolish just four properties. How many is it in Essex? Right now, residents are receiving letters telling them they're now within the boundary. So we've How many was it so far? Yeah, it's about 83, I think. 83. We've got four. Uh, and I believe that they're on uh, they're at Marling Cross on the other side of Henhouse Road. Uh, and they're going to take 2.32 kilometres of land during the construction period and 2.55 kilometres of land permanently. To give you an idea, that's around 575 acres during the construction and 630 acres afterwards. It will stretch all the way from Chalk, south to the A2 at Singlewell and eastwards all the way down the street. And the question is, do you support or oppose 
a proposed land area that they need to build the Lower Thames Crossing. And again, they're going to give you a box, and that's for you to give the reasons why you answered it, how you answered. And basically, you've got to think, is it land you required? Is it reasonable? If not, think of a reason. When questioned at the um, information events, Highways England could not confirm that the land put aside for environmental mitigation, such as tree planting, would remain within their control or ownership, which is what you were saying. So you might think about that. Should that land go back to the owner? Should it go back to Grayson Borough Council? Or should it go to someone like the Woodland Trust or somebody like that? Yes. Interestingly, when I spoke to one of the people at the consultation, they said that it would be rain property of Highways England, but I'd say take that with what you will. I don't know how crucial it is, but why I get the impression it might be. I've heard lots of conflicting answers, so I, I think it's still up in the air, to be perfectly honest with you. Right, please let us know the reasons for your response to question 6A and any other views you've got on the environmental aspects. Just some things you might want to think of. Have you got any concern? I've been through this. All right, let's go through that one. A proposed rest and service area and a maintenance depot. The proposal provides a rest and service area and a maintenance depot just north of the river near Tilbury Junction. And questions 8A and 8B and 8C refer to this. Some of you might be happy that this is across the river and not south of the river. No doubt some of our friends on the other side would like to see it in Kent. On the other hand, you might not wish this on anybody. I just warn you, if you're happy with it going to Tilbury, then support it and just hope that they're not saying, urge Highways England to put it in Kent. You might think that there is no need for a rest and service area anywhere along the route. That might be your answer. But you could be neutral or you can choose not to answer this if you haven't got a view. <coughs> They've, they've told us that um, they, it's a guideline that they have to have one every 28 miles and they'll be measuring it from Medway services to South Mills. So if you judge it on 28 miles, that's where they're working their locations out from. But we've been told it's probably more than likely not many other areas they can put it along the route. Just if that helps at all. I, I don't know whether we're going to have a view on it, to be honest with you. Traffic. The Lower Thames Crossing told us in 2016 is expected to generate up to 60,000 extra crossings every day due to what they call induced demand or the release of suppressed demand. Uh, the Lower Thames Crossing itself is expected to carry up to 80,000 vehicles a day and up to 24% of these, that's nearly a quarter, are expected to be heavy goods vehicles. Traffic levels on the M25 at Dartford and on the A2 to the west of the link, going up towards Dartford, are expected to reduce. But traffic on the, ET, on the A2 east of the Lower Thames Crossing and on the M2 and on the A229 is expected to increase significantly. Highways England say that they've modelled traffic forecasts on most of the local roads, such as Thong Lane, Valley Drive, Pear Tree Lane, Henhurst Road, Soul Street, the A227, but they've not published them. Why not? We keep asking them. How can they consult and ask you what you think of the traffic if they're not going to tell you what it's expected to be? They have given some sketches maps which sort of indicate that peak traffic in Thong Lane and Pear Tree Lane, Valley Drive and Henhurst Road will increase by between 101 and 500 vehicles an hour at peak times. What measures would you like to see to mitigate or or even reduce this? Okay. These are the sort make, of things you need to think. 
Make some line at all, right? That's one way. Can I stop the buggers? <laughs> and I'll set, I'll set the charge. And here's another thing. They told us, although this is disputed information, I've had two different answers, that they've only modelled for normal operation. When we said, well, what about when the Dartford Tunnel closes? I said, well, we, we can't model for every possibility. We said it's not a possibility, it happens almost every day. And we know that they regularly cause tailbacks, anything up to 10 miles, or anything down to Swanley, even Old Beaton. So if there's a problem at Dartford, when? <laughs> when there's a problem at Dartford, what route do you think traffic coming around the M25 is going to use from, say, Junction 5? 227 and the same goes if it is at junction 3 it will find a route through the villages it will find its own route so there's sort of things that you need to think about when you answer this wonderful question do you agree or disagree with the view that a lower Thames crossing will improve traffic conditions on the surrounding road network then they give you a box to let you, so that you can tell them the reasons for your response in question 9A and any other views you've got. So the things you've got to think about. Will the Lower Thames Crossing generate more traffic? We know it will. What will be the impact on the local roads, including the 8227, the 8228, the 8229 and the country lanes? What rat runs will be created during normal operation? What rat runs will be created during abnormal operation? Do we really believe that the lower Thames crossing has got a chance of working without improvements to the junction of Bluebell Hill? And if the answer's, well, of course you've got to do something up there, then why is it not costed into this project? Similarly, access from the A2 uh, to the A2 at Junction 2 at Dartford. How is traffic going to get from the M25 to, down to Gravesend? You won't get right there through the roundabout at the moment with the traffic lights all the way around. They've got to do something. So should it be costed? I raised but, the problem at uh, Bluebell Hill at the, uh, at the consultation. And they said it's nothing to do with us. That's to do with the KCC. Yeah, yeah. They often say that um, that's not our problem. My own view is they all know that it's a problem. They just won't admit to it, and they don't want to cost it into this job because it'll make this job look too expensive. But if you agree that the Lower Thames Crossing will improve traffic conditions on the surrounding road network, then please feel free to. Moving on to charges, and I'm not far from the end now. Uh, note that they intend to seek flexibility, and by this they mean differential charging. In other words, they might charge different amounts at Dartford and the Lower Thames Crossing in order to balance, get the right levels flowing through both crossings. So if the Lower Thames Crossing uh, doesn't attract sufficient traffic, they could lower the charges for using it to encourage more traffic to use it. Or perhaps, more likely, increase the charges at Dartford to deter traffic from using that. Or vice versa. They've told us that the indicative charging regime for using the Lower Thames Crossing could be anything between half the amount at Dartford or one and a half times the amount at Dartford. Hazardous loads such as petrol tankers we will not need escorting through the Lower Thames Crossing. And it's therefore possible that tankers will be directed towards the Lower Thames Crossing in order to help stop, reduce the number of stoppages that occur at Dartford. They also have plan to have flexibility to vary the charges for different classifications of vehicles. It does say that Highways England, Highways England say that heavy good vehicles will be encouraged to use the Lower Thames Crossing and up to 24% of the vehicles will be heavy goods vehicles. So it's possible that we could see 
lower charges at Dartford for cars, but higher charges for lorries at Dartford. And at this end, it'll be low prices for lorries and high prices for cars. I don't know, I'm just guessing. There's nothing specific that I've found about extending the local resident discount scheme to resident of Gravesham. At the moment, if you live in Dartford or Thurrock, you can pay £10 a year to get 50 crossings and plus 20p for any additional crossing, or you can pay £20 a year for unlimited number of crossings. If you think that residents of Gravesham should be entitled to the same, dis uh, same discount scheme, then I think we ought to tell them. Building it. The main tunnel boring operations will take place from Tilbury. But just do not underestimate the disruption that this massive construction project will entail. I don't think many people have quite grasped the scale of this construction project. The whole area will become one huge construction site from the M2 at Strood to the A2 at Singlewell and from Clay Lane Wood and the Inn on the Lake all the way down to Chalk. The A2 is going to be widened to 12 lanes from the M2 all the way up to Grays and East and they're going to realign it in places. Uh, the Brewers Road Bridge and the Thong Lane Bridge are going to have to be knocked down and rebuilt. There's going to be millions of tons of soil that's either going to need to be moved or removed from the site. And it is expected that it will be an average of 5,800 heavy goods vehicle movements a month on our road south of the river. That's 250 a day. This doesn't include smaller vehicles. And it doesn't include the 2,000 people that will be working on the site. There's going to be lots of traffic. There's plans for a construction compound immediately opposite the houses in Thong Lane from Vigilant Way all the way down to Cascades. The good news is going to be hidden by a massive hill. If that's good news, then fine. <laughs> um, normal working hours, you can support it. No, me, Bob. No, no. Normal working hours will be from 8 o'clock till 6 o'clock Monday to Friday, 4 o'clock on sat Saturdays, but with up to an hour before and after for mobilisation. That basically means to me that it's going to be 7 till 7. Oh, and, and they're going to be extended working for certain activities which go up to 10 o'clock. Oh, and maintenance will take place on Sundays between 8 and 5. And I haven't said it, but some things will actually happen 24 hours a day, particularly the tunnel. And this is going to go on for seven years. So, do you support or oppose our initial plans on how to build for the lower Thames crossing? And then they give you a box. Please let us know the reasons for your response um, and any other comments you want to make. So, are you happy with the working hours? Are you happy with this big construction compound hidden behind a big hill apparently, located immediately opposite houses in Thong Lane, or should it just be moved a bit further away? If there are any other mitigation you think that they should consider to reduce the noise, disturbance or disruption, please tell them. Give them your views in the box provided. Quickly mention the utilities and pylons. There's a major gas pipeline that runs from Chalk through to Clay Lane, Wood and beyond, which needs diversion before the main work on the road takes place. It has been diverted before. I've seen them diverted before, and it doesn't cause a permanent scar, to be perfectly honest with you. The high-voltage electric power line between Thong Lane and Clay Lane Wood, uh, Wood will need diverting. This will result in the line being uh, closer to Sean Western Riverview Park, with a new pylon being located around about 50 to 100 metres from the end of Genesta Glade. It's unlikely that there will be any health risks from this HV overhead line, but the new pylons will impact on views. Question, should it be moved further away from residential properties? If you've got any comments on here, put them in the box provided. 
just to give you an idea, that is Thong Lane with the green bridge across it. This is Thong, this is Riverview Park, and there's the new pylon sitting at the end of Genesta Glade. Christmas lights on it. Jolly good. I'm going to put fish in the pond. Seriously, that pylon, sorry, sorry. That pylon, for health and safety reasons of operations in future, they're maintaining it. Why can't that go another 50 metres towards the edge? I don't think there is 50 metres towards the edge. It says on the paper. I ask the question. You know, this is what, why I'm telling you, you know, if you've got any comments on it, put it in the box. Why can't they underground it? Yeah, it's possibly a solution. Put it in the box. Excuse me. Cost a lot. When are we going to get this questionnaire? The questionnaire, the questionnaire has been available since 26th of October, was it? Something like No, longer ago than that. It's available, you should have got it, at, if you've gone to any of the uh, information events that are handing them out, but don't worry, it's available online, and at the end of this, I will tell you where you can find it. I think the best idea is to go to Dartford and ask them how they got away with it up there. <laughs> what have I done here? Well, they filled in all our consultations for us. <laughs> There is unlikely. I, I only say that because I'm biased. I worked for UK Power Networks for 40 years. Not at that distance, not at that distance. I wouldn't like to live underneath it, but I've seen it much, much closer to houses than that. You've got more likely with the gas coming from the tunnel. Right. <coughs> this is an important question, question 13. They say they would like to know what is important to you. It's your free hand box. Please let them know if you've got any comments about the Lower Thames Crossing. My own view is I think it's probably too late to change their mind about the location of the crossing. I think that they decided it years ago. But by all means, let them know if you don't agree with their decision. Highways England paid their legal fees. They're getting a new consultation in the spring where they're getting new traffic modelling data and they're getting routes that have previously been dismissed back on the table. For so, so you don't have to agree with me, but I'm just giving you my views. I think it's probably too late, but there you go. But what I would say is please focus on getting improvements to the design. Practical changes that will go some way to easing the worst of your impacts. Try not to get angry or make it personal. Rants might make you feel better, but it ain't Facebook. Uh, they won't get you what you want. Be quite clear and calm about what you're looking for. Take your time. Attach separate sheets if you want to. They are obliged to consider all your comments and concerns, whether they take any notes or not. Entirely up to them. Right, that's your, all the questions I'm going to go through. There are a number of other questions about you. What did you think of the consultation, whether you're male or female, black or white, young or old, in work, unemployed, straight or gay. It's up to you whether or not you answer these questions. Do not be surprised, because they've done it in the last two consultations. When they publish the report, it will include something along the lines of the majority of those people who disagreed with the proposals lived in the areas closest to the LTC. In other words, they're implying you that you're a NIMBY, a 
and yet your views should carry less weight. Don't be concerned about that. You would be the people most directly and permanently affected by this. You will be the ones that have got to suffer the noise and the disruption. And you've got every right to defend your backyard and have your voice heard. Just finishing off, the consultation itself can be found online at highwaysengland.citizenspace.com LTC consultation. And all of this guide that I've just gone through can be found online at ltca.org.uk 2018 guide. I think it's absolutely essential that you use the opportunity to tell them what you think. Please complete the consultation by the 20th of December 2018. Thank you and good luck. Thank you, Bob. I think we're going to have a bit of a Q&A session now. Aaron's got a roving microphone he's going to bring, bring around for you. I'll go right the back and come back. Thank you, Derek. We're going. <coughs> I have mentioned this too about air quality. Um, I'm a member of Grays and Adult for Friends of the Earth. And in case you are worried about air quality, which is partly responsible for 40,000 deaths in England each year, it's not directly responsible for it, but it's, it, it adds to other conditions. Um, and I believe it, it affects dementia as well. Um, we've done some surveys around the tunnel approach in Dartford. And um, our readings that we took are over a month, and they measure nitrogen dioxide, which are mainly emissions from diesel cars. Now, they don't coincide with the official way of doing emissions, because the official emissions are done either over a year or over a day. So our, our, our results don't tie in with them. But I would say that we took three readings on Bar Arrow Lane, either side of the Dartford Tunnel, and the ones on the Gravesend side of the Dartford Tunnel, since 8282, showed double the legal limits. There were 80 milligrams instead of 40 milligrams, which is the legal limit. And the ones on the Dartford side were one and a half times the legal limit. Now it's interesting that on the Gravesend side there were trees, very, the, 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 these are, by the way are where they built flats right next door to the A2, so these people who live in these flats are experiencing these conditions and breathing these in. Um, on that side of the road there were trees trying to protect it. On the, on the Dartford side of the road there was a wall and the, res the results of putting a wall there quite high up wall, uh, obviously mitigated to some extent uh, the effects of the, the, the nitrogen dioxide and obviously the, the other emissions from uh, diesel cars, which are diesel particulates. Now, it, I'm sure it depends on whether cars are stationary, because this is an area where cars are, will sometimes be stationary trying to get to the Dartford Tunnel and where it's free flowing. Because the other place we took regions were on East Hill coming out of Dartford. And they were also one and a half times the, um, the, 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 the legal limits. If, if, if you can accept our readings alongside uh, the, the official readings. So if, if you're worried about air quality, when we came to that picture of where the um, pylon was, and those trees, and that corner of Riverview Park, I don't remember, that's a lot further than where they built the houses at Dartford. So I understand that LTCA think they are not going to breach any of the conditions. I say those those houses on the corner of Thong Lane, they will be breaching the conditions over a year and over, over a lot of periods, Wait. especially if there is. Um, I'll, 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 I'll get to you in a minute. I'll hand it back in a minute. Um, especially if there is slow moving traffic or uh, any any problem getting through the tunnel, which LTCA says is not going to be a problem. It's all going to go sailing through, no problem. No, no, no. We um, sorry. You mean highways? I mean highways, England, don't I? Yes, of course I do. Yeah. Right. 
So and we agree with you. If you, if you ask Andy yeah. Carr and then know a little bit about yeah. um, nitrous oxide. Yeah. yeah. So, so that is that is exactly where exactly where we are. So we've been interested in the levels of the, yeah. the air pollution there. Their predictions, I mean at the moment they're measuring it at 15, 16. Their predictions when the road is built in 2027 is that they will actually reduce. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and they base that That's on electrification of vehicles and and air becoming cleaner in general. Oh. Well, um, if right. we tumble dry up. if we if we <laughs> if we get rid of diesel cars, that, that is helpful. But um, I, I would say that we, we've got the problem. Um, no, I, I don't need this, do I? I've got quite a loud enough voice. Um, I'm, I'm, as a member of Friends of the Earth, I'm also interested in climate change. Now, it's unfortunate that petrol cars are um, a bigger contributor to climate change, along with farting cows and things like that, and air, aircraft, whereas diesel cars contribute less to climate change, which is why diesel cars came out originally. But diesel cars are much worse for local air pollution. That's all I can say. Thank you. So are you saying that it's better to build a brick wall than have trees? To stop yes. 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 Yeah. I think you'll find that uh, Highways England are monitoring nitrous oxide and Gravesham are as well. I believe. They want to. Yes. So, so we'll get some information on that. Next question is Andy. Sorry. Where's Andy? Sorry. Sorry. Um, just, just rather than the question on the mitigation side of things, um, we spoke to a rather nice young lady yesterday called Caroline from the environmental team who said that trees do not mitigate sound. So the trees that they're putting either side are not there to mitigate sound. So I'm gonna put her name in my box because she said it's not there to the mitigate the sound. So the quick, when somebody raised the point about houses, I think it's a gentleman down here, yeah. the trees are not there to do any mitigation other than to maybe make it look pretty or at some time change it. So the trees are not there to mitigate sound. So what's their environmental impact mitigation statement for the trees? What's they have they stated why they're putting them there? I think so it might look pretty. Yeah. yeah, but that's yeah. not. I think it is. It's it it intended to replace uh, the trees that they're having to cut down, David. That's what I understand. But. Uh, Really, you know, it's about 600 or more pages on it, and I, I fell asleep. Yeah, I mean, that. yeah, found in the top of Woodlands Lane, and and the and the noise from the existing A2 when the wind in the right direction is very noisy. It's, it's yeah, unbearable in the back garden. Yeah, really. exactly. With regards to the proposals, although we see trees there, it's not the only mitigation that they're putting there. Well, we so, can, can, can I go back to a development that took place because I used to live in Gravesend when they they rebuilt the A2. They said if the sound increased in your gardens, then they would put the sound barriers on the bridge of the A2, but it wasn't going to increase because it was further away from your house. What they didn't say was, yes, it's further away from your house, it's no longer in a cutting, it's up in the air, yes. and in fact the sound has in increased and the disturbance did increase, and, it's and their answer was, bollocks. It's, it's for us to tell, if we think that a woodland, although nice, is not going to be enough, tell them it's not enough. Tell them what we'd like to see there instead. I've got another question here. Yeah. I, the, uh, I posed one question regarding noise to uh, <coughs> the consultation. And uh, I've made a request for triple glazing to be supplied no. by Highway England. And uh, his advice to me was... Um, to put it on the, uh, whether they will or won't. Uh. <laughs> Sound advice, I'd say get it on the uh, consultation response. I want an else right speak. Any more questions? Do we know what Graves and Borough Council's view on this is and, and, what, they're, and what they're doing? to try and help us? Um, well, I'm sure you read it in that uh, they sent out um, their local paper, what do they call it? Gravesend or uh, what's the newspaper that they send out? Gravesend reporter, Gravesend, oh. No, no, the, the, the council. Yeah. 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 
Borough. Your Borough. Your Borough. Your borough. Didn't you read it in there? There was nothing in there. It was all about the pantomime or, you know, the, the Christmas lights. I've asked Gravesham Borough Council, what is your view? Why are you being so quiet about it? They're not saying a word. We've got no idea whether they're um, supportive of us or don't care. They're just not saying anything. <coughs> We've written to them. We've said to them, can you please issue a statement? Tell us what your views are. It would be good if they were doing some events similar to this, really. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. But they're not. Yes. I'll just jump in and say Thorough Council were very slow in coming forward with anything. At a full council meeting, one of our members of our Winter Tennis Crossing Action Group stepped up and asked a question in the middle of full council at an appropriate time and in a polite way. Um, it caused a lot of problems. The mayor walked out and, and brought a stop to the meeting. The press picked up on it, and by the next morning, we had a monthly task force in place now taking position with it. So, well, councils. I am. Um, I'm a nosy old sod and I read the council minutes and the cabinet minutes every time they come out. They have not mentioned it. It's as if it's not happening in Gravesend. Are they concerned then, Bob, of reduced funding from the gap from the uh, from central government? Think? No, I've got no idea why why um, there's a, a lack of interest on it. We we we're trying to <coughs> raise our interest, and certain councillors are interested. There's no doubt about it. But if you read the minutes of the meeting or anything that's issued by Gravesham, I can't see anything at all. I can't see anything. Sorry. Well, just on the um, interest from the council thing, I don't, I don't know if you remember, a couple of years ago now, about t a year ago... £150,000 they put to one side to combat this. About a year, two years ago, um, Brian resigned from the cabinet... At, um, uh, county council, and they did that consultation for uh, well, for my parents over in Higham, um, where Adam came, and that was quite well attended. So Brian, as an individual, is interested. That's well, I have to say, know. Gravesham Borough Council was much. Look, I don't want to get political, but they were much more engaged in the 2016 um, consultation. Every time LTCA met, the leader of Gravesham Borough Council was there with us the late John Cubitt. Doesn't happen now. Um, you're right, Brian Sweetland resigned his position because he was the uh, cabinet member for highways in KCC, and KCC supported it. They really wanted the crossing exactly where it is now, so he resigned his position. Um, also two years ago, Gravesham Borough Council um, earmarked £150,000 towards a potential judicial review, they spent nothing. And I actually don't think they've got any intention of spending anything. But please, I don't want to get this political, because the Lower Thames Crossing affects all of us. It doesn't matter whether you're Labour, Liberal, doesn't matter where, it's going to affect you all. So don't make it political, please. Next. That's all right. I'm there. No, I want to hear you. <laughs> the thing is, do we know who's carrying the cost for the tunnel construction? Now, is it highways or is it like the bridge? It was a private and then they put the tariff on to get the money back. Well, it has changed just recently because uh, um, the... If you read the initial cons uh, consultation documents that have been out about eight weeks now, or six weeks, they actually said that the roads themselves would be privately funded when they build them, but the crossing, the tunnels, would be government funded. They've actually changed their mind now, and the whole thing will be government funded. That's because in the budget, the Chancellor said he's had enough of yes. PFIs. Funded. Yeah, it's going to be tax. Yeah, it's not government funded. They've got no money, so it, it, it'll be coming out of your pockets and my pockets. You know, uh, and, uh, we'll be paying for it, um, but it will still be told. It's just not decided how much it'll be told at the moment. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Any more questions? 
Over at the back there. Can we get the mic back there? Thank you. Um, what was the result of your meeting that you had with Highways England a week or so back? Uh, we're, uh, that was a very successful meeting, actually. Uh, they were certainly listening to our views. Um, we've yet to circulate the notes from that meeting, um, but we will get those published on the website um, as soon as we can. Um, they certainly seemed quite positive. They were taking on board our views, and um, we have to take them at their word, really. Um, Aaron, have you got any yeah. comments? One thing, I mean, we will be publishing the minutes um, or, or some notes from that meeting for you, um, but one thing I did question Highways England on myself was um, the concerns many residents have of the compound being immediately opposite Fong Lane, um, with all the construction, traffic and everything that could be going on there. And the one thing I raised was, are you expecting the 250 um, large vehicles a day, um, lorries, to be using from lane down the country road or coming up past the school across the speed bumps um, because that sounds crazy to me um, much preferable maybe if they could create an access road from the A226 or even come directly from the A2 um, anyway here's Tim Jones um, was he project project director his his response to us at that, at that meeting was um, you can take it from me they will not have access to that compound from Fong Lane that's what he said to us so that's that's one positive thing that came out of the meeting. Um, and and as, as Robin said, we will be publishing the minutes uh, or notes from that meeting in due course. Yeah, and just to clarify, we did go through each and every one of our concerns as we've gone through tonight as well with them. We covered the whole gambit. One of the things that um, Tim Jones said was, whatever you do, comment. Give them comments. Don't just say, we don't want it here, we don't want it here. His words were, you'll just be disregarded. If you just say, we don't want it, they won't listen to you. So tell them what you do want, and they will have to take it into consideration. Okay, I think I'll um, draw the meeting to a close. Thanks for your time, thanks for attending. And... Uh, We, yeah, we do actually have some spare copies of the consultation documents that you're welcome to take um, down at the front here. Thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs>